Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Rambling Reaction Review. Today, we will be discussing Ruby, World of Remnant, The Four Maidens. Oddly enough, World of Remnant number four for this volume as well. I see what you did there. Now, you might have noticed that I actually didn't call it an info filler this time, because there's not that much actual new info in this World of Remnant. It's actually just a retelling of the story Pyrrha told us of the Four Maidens back in Chapter 6 of this volume. Now, when I loaded up the video page for this episode, I was doubly disappointed to be exact. Not just for the fact that we have to wait for another week for the main story to continue, but that wasn't too bad because I kind of knew that was happening, but more for the fact that it was a topic that we already knew about. But even though I it already had all of that against it right off the bat, right off the get-go, when you actually watch the episode in its entirely, I think you will be pleasantly surprised. That was a long intro, so let's begin. Deep in the forests of Remnant, beside a great and mighty river... We begin with the usual pacifying voice of Shannon McCormick as Ozpin, narrating the story. And unlike the version we are told by Pyrrha, you can see right off the bat that this one has a lot more polish applied to it. Much more detail in the background, and the characters are kind of more realistically drawn. Even the fireplace in the background as a background piece has double, maybe even triple, the frame rate of previous World of Remnants this season. So the story continues the same as Pyrrha told it before, though more drawn out as each sister shows up over a period of time instead of all at once like in her fairy tale. Each one saying to the old man, I am on a journey and I am waiting for my sisters. This is actually a new bit of information for us, which leads to the question, outside of helping people on their way, what is their final goal? I actually think that this is a situation where the journey is more important than the ending. The journey is their goal. As more sisters arrive and more things happen, I gotta say, I'm surprised to say that they all look really good, aesthetically wise. The character designs are detailed, the connecting lines between their joints are a lot less jagged than before, especially the elbows. God, did I notice like lines sticking out of the elbows before? And the animation is so much smoother, even bouncier, more alive in points. This is something that I feel that I could watch weekly as its own show and have no problems with the style, uh, the animation quality put into every episode. Heck, if they did this for every episode before, she would be amazing. Look at Summer's hair. It's almost more animated than the hair in some of the 3D episodes. And it's damn near, like, hypnotic. Just side to side. This is television show quality. It reminds me of 16. You guys ever watched that show? For us Canadians, it was Teletoon. For the Americans, uh, Cartoon Network. And it was the very same sort of animation. Uh, highly detailed, very smooth, and fully computer animated 2D cartoon. No paper, just computer. So, while we're talking about production, the music. The music is perfectly suited and tailor-made for each scene, even for transitions. My favorite, when the wizard is opening the door and stepping outside for the first time. It makes your feelings well up inside. The music gives you hope that this old man will find happiness through his new friends. Now, going back to the story, I gotta say, my favorite sister has to be Spring. She is chipper, she is bouncy. Not only does she plant the wizard's garden, but rebuilds the fence too. <laughs> Each sister helps in their own way, not just Spring. Winter shows him calm and serenity, not that serenity. Summer helps give him a positive attitude. And fall shows him there is so much to be thankful for. Like Thanksgiving? Yeah, that is in fall. I beg your pardon, sir, but we did not do these things for you because you were special. We do what we can for everyone. Hearing Osbin do all the voices of the different maidens makes me imagine that he is sitting in a giant rocking chair with a book, reading fairy tales to kids in the school's library. I just want to hear 
a series with Shannon McCormick using the Osmond voice to recite all the different books from Dr. Zeus. I would love that, a series like that. Or even just a story time segment. Let's just do story time with Ozpin. Wait, we're already doing that, aren't we? Okay, the story ends the same way as Pira told us before. As a gift for opening the wizard's eyes, he gives the maidens the power of the elements, so they may do for others what they did for him. Though, one bit of this ending is different than Pira's fairy tale. They promise to return every year to visit their friend, the wizard. Does that mean that in the main show, there's going to be some sort of meeting where all four maidens must show up at once? Is it something they just do like as something that's passed on from maiden to maiden? Like maybe it's like some sort of like genetic memory that gets not genetic memory, but magic memory that gets passed on when you become a maiden. This information is given to you or maybe it's some sort of like compulsion like a migration they all show up at the same place and meet like once a year that's again even to say if the wizard's still alive we'll get into that just a little bit later very good episode even for a retelling it does add a little extra info and on top of that it ends up being in my opinion the very best looking world of remnant thus far not just this volume but the whole show so far my only complaint would be that they should have had this before. Why not? Like, okay, maybe I can understand time constraints and the such, but wow, now that I can see what they're really capable of doing, they've raised the bar. I hope that they can keep that bar raised in future volumes, because I believe this is the last World of Remnant. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, let's go back to what I mentioned about the wizard. Now that we have more information, let's do a little bit of theorizing. A lot of people are theorizing about the Maidens, trying to line up each Maiden with their choice of character. I'm going to skip that, because for now, I'm not exactly too sure on that. I haven't really been able to get my mind around different Maiden theories. One theory, though, is I'm going to talk about is the Wizard. The Wizard of Oz. I think Ospin is not the Wizard. Haha, <laughs> fooled ya. But I think he is a relative or an agent of him. First, let me explain the similarities for how they could be related. As a teacher, Ozpin is now doing what the Four Maidens did for the wizard. He is helping people realize that the world is worth living in, worth fighting for. That, coupled with a few choice lines of being older than he looks, I've made more mistakes than any man, woman, and child on this planet. But not that old. Would you believe me if I told you that one's been around since I was a boy? <laughs> Along with all that time symbolism with the clock gears and Ozpin's office. Also, if semblances can be hereditary, could that mean Ozpin could have some time-based semblance passed down from the wizard who has said, and I quote, has lived for centuries? That also leads into the last bit, his guilt. The guilt Ozpin has for making so many mistakes that he says is more than anyone else has ever made. What mistakes could that be? Could it be that he regrets his ancestor giving the maidens the power they have now? Because if you think about it, their lives have been ruined. Look at Amber, look at Pyrrha, and look at Everyone Cinder has come across in her hunt for power. A sort of maybe sins of the father scenario where he has tried helping previous maidens in the past and failed. Now to explain how he is not the wizard. Two points for this. One, simply being he told us so. That one's been around since I was a boy. <laughs> You're not that old, professor. Osman might leave out details to hide the truth, but I do not take him for an outright liar. If he says the story predates him, I believe it, but it doesn't predate him by much. Secondly, his namesake. 
Oz, as in the Wizard of Oz, who in the original story, the Wizard of Oz, is not a wizard at all. He is just a front man. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. He is just there as a misdirection to make us think that he is the great and powerful Oz. Well, that's my thoughts and theories stemming from this chapter. Again, big improvement overall. I came in not expecting much and was blown away by the quality. To be honest, even though it's a story we've heard and it takes us away from the main story, it's kind of nice to see it from a different perspective. And also, it's nice to kind of unwind from the main story, the panic of the last episode which is all just a tactic, lulling us into a false sense of security before they go full horror movie on us next episode. But that's just my theory. That is all for me tonight, everybody. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. As always, this is just my opinion. I'm not an expert. If you would like to know something or know something that I don't know, feel free to leave a comment below. Also, check out my Twitter, check out my Tumblr, I'm around there a lot too. And until next time, good night everybody!